Welcome to Bordeaux. When you think of this southwestern port city, probably one thing comes to mind, wine. wine. But Bordeaux is about so much more than just that. It's filled with local delicacies linked to the history of the city and the region around it. So what can Bordeaux's foods and especially wines tell us about the area? Well, join us as we discover this beautiful region. If you ask people to name one wine in the world, chances are they'll probably say Bordeaux. Bordeaux wines are known for their elegance, complexity, and class. Some people say they're the best wines in the world, which is debatable, of course. They're certainly among the most prestigious, and in any case, there is no doubt that wine is the pride and joy of Bordeaux. It's been very beneficial to the local economy. Over the years, the city of Bordeaux has flourished, thanks in part to the wine trade. There's even an entire museum devoted to wine. It's called La Cité du Vin. Solène Jaboulet, you are the Director of Marketing and Communication here at the uh, Cité du Vin, this one-of-a-kind museum that was inaugurated in 2016. Why did Bordeaux need a wine museum? Well, I guess you know that the, the history of Bordeaux has been closely linked to wine for ages, so it was just um, obvious that we needed a wine museum. But Cité du Vin is not really um, a wine museum, not a traditional museum, because the idea is to speak about wine um, all around the world as a, a cultural heritage, like gastronomy is an heritage, wine is also an heritage. The museum is run by the foundation for the culture and the civilization of wine. How has wine been important in the world's culture and the culture of France? Uh, wine has been present in, in many civilizations, uh, from the Greek to the Egyptian and up to now. Uh, and in France, you're right, we have a particular history with wine. Uh, first, the, um, the climate and, and the soil of uh, many regions uh, of France are very uh, fit to uh, cultivate uh, vines and to, to grow vineyards. Um, and then it's been part of the history, as gastronomy is very important in France, wine is also very important, and, and that's it, I make wine so important in France. And when you think about a museum, you think about uh, paintings or sculptures. What in the world do you find in a wine museum? Well, here you won't see pictures, you won't see uh, objects. Uh, there are many screens and there are many uh, interactive uh, videos. Um, most of the things are digital. Uh, the idea was to, to use new technologies to explain in very simple ways and words uh, what is wine, what is culture. Uh, we are accessible to anyone, and mostly to those who don't know anything about wine, but also to experts, uh, and uh, to people from around the world, because uh, Cité du Vinque has been visited in eight languages. And one of the cool things in this museum is that you can discover how wine affects your uh, senses, including your sense of smell. Absolutely. We have a big buffet of uh, various um, aromas that you can smell and try to guess what, what they are. Uh, aromas you can find in white wines and in red wines. Uh, and the idea is to make you realize that by smelling wine and by tasting wine, you can find all these various aromas and you really use your senses. The world of wine can be a little bit intimidating at times. Are you trying to demystify the world of wine? Absolutely. The purpose of the Cité du Vin is um, to make wine accessible to anyone in very simple words, uh, so that anyone can understand how you make wine, how to uh, open a bottle, how to serve wine, um, the link between wine and art de vivre. Uh, so anything you could imagine about wine is present here in the Cité du Vin. When you visit this museum, one of the best parts is, is the end, <laughs> where you get to taste wines from around the world. But coming back to Bordeaux, people tend to associate Bordeaux with red wine, but there's really something for everyone. There's white and sparkling. Here are some fun facts to know about the Bordeaux region. Known as the Pearl of Aquitaine, Bordeaux is the fifth most populated city in France, after Paris, Lyon, Marseille, and Lille. 
It's also a beautiful and exciting tourist destination. The elegant city center is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. However, behind the veneer of the hundreds of stunning historic sites and monuments is a sinister legacy. Bordeaux made part of its fortune from slavery. Between the 17th and 19th century, Bordeaux was France's second largest port of the African slave trade. Today, there are moves to grapple with the city's dark past, but traditionally, the historical spotlight has been put on the region's thriving wine trade. Vines were first introduced to the region in the first century by the Romans. But international trade really kicked off when Eleanor of Aquitaine married Henry II of England in the 12th century. The export of Bordeaux wines to London started booming and has continued to the present day. Located on the Gironde estuary at the confluence of the Dordogne and Garonne rivers, Bordeaux is the biggest fine wine producing area in the world and France's largest AOC, Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée, which means that in order to be labeled as a Bordeaux wine, it must come from this specific area of France. Within the region, there are over 50 different appellations, like saint emilion Margaux, and Pomerol. With some 7,000 winemakers, Bordeaux is France's undisputed wine capital. 20 bottles of Bordeaux wines are sold every second around the world. A common feature among Bordeaux wines are the beautiful domains where they're produced, like the Chateau de Malray with its 17th century castle. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour, Bonjour. bienvenue Bonjour. au Château de Malray. Ben merci mmh. beaucoup, on a hâte de goûter vos vins. Eh bien, on va, on va commencer par un Château de Malray 2019. Quels sont les arômes Alors, on est surtout sur des fruits noirs. De, 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 de prunes de, de, et aussi des arômes de, de, de cassis euh, et on a un léger boisé qui, est, qui vient souligner les, 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 ces arômes-là et on peut goûter. goûter. <rire> C'est très doux. Mm. C'est très soyeux. Oui. Uh, tell us about the château and the wines you make here. Alors, l'histoire de ce château démarre au XVIe siècle et euh, l'histoire du vin est beaucoup plus récente. C'est dans les années, disons, 1960, où on a commencé, disons, à implanter un, un vignoble là, ici. On est à Bordeaux, dans la région de Bordeaux. On est rive gauche, c'est le Médoc. On est sur des sols qui sont beaucoup plus euh, sableux et graveleux. On a à peu près 55 hectares euh, de, de vignes là, ici. Et on produit environ euh, 150 000 bouteilles à 200 000 bouteilles par an. Des vins qui sont très, très fruités, avec euh, des, des tanins qui sont très souples, très soyeux. So you mentioned the soil. Uh, people often say that Bordeaux is the best wine in the world. Could the soil be the secret? Alors, le, le sol a une importance capitale, mais la climatologie. On est dans une, une zone qui est euh, euh, océanique, donc avec des alternances de pluie de soleil, euh, des températures qui sont clémentes et, et qui conviennent énormément, disons, à, à, à la production du, du vin. Bordeaux wines can sometimes have the reputation of being quite expensive. Are they a luxury product or are they still somewhat accessible? Alors, le, le, les vins de Bordeaux en général ne sont pas chers, pas chers du tout. Euh, si on veut comparer, euh, ils arrivent au, auprès des, des consommateurs entre 10 et 20 euros. Donc, euh, c'est tout à fait abordable. Euh, alors, comme dans toutes les régions viticoles, il y a des, des stars qui se vendent à des prix euh, avec des, où il y a 3 zéros derrière, derrière le premier chiffre. Mais, mais, mais ce sont quelques stars. Mais en général, les vins de Bordeaux sont très abordables. Many wine producers around France have talked about the challenges of climate change. Is that something that you've noticed here in the Bordeaux region too? Je suis pas climatosceptique, mais je, il y a un, un réchauffement, c'est indéniable. Mais on a des, des périodes avec des excès, des excès d'eau, des excès de, de froid, des excès de, de, de chaleur. On a toujours eu ça depuis des décennies, des, des, des siècles, ça a toujours existé. On a tout un, un, un attirail pour pouvoir euh, faire face à un, un réchauffement climatique. So hopefully Bordeaux wines have a long future ahead of them. Thank you so much for being with us today. Merci de votre visite. And this being France, we have to remind you to drink responsibly.
Bordeaux isn't just all about the wine, of course. There is a lot more to discover here as well. Well, a lot here revolves around the water. The city is built along the Garonne River, and the Atlantic Ocean is not that far away. We're off to meet the last remaining professional fishermen here in Bordeaux. We're here with Jean-Marie Oshkorn. You are le pêcheur de Bordeaux, and you're out here on the river come rain, come shine. You fish according to the seasons. What are you looking for today? Alors aujourd'hui, on va, on va partir à la pêche à la pibale. Euh, C'est l'alvin d'anguille. C'est un tout petit poisson qui est un peu l'or blanc de la, de la Garonne. Ça vient de, en direct de la mer des Sargasses. Et c'est des poissons qu'on vend assez cher, soit pour la consommation, soit pour le repeuplement. The Garonne River looks muddy because of the clay soil, which is actually why the wine and the food are so great here at times. But actually, you were telling me the river itself is the cleanest in France. La rivière a l'air euh, sale, mais en fait, elle n'est pas sale, elle est juste bronzée. Et euh, c'est plutôt une qualité. Et en fait, c'est le fleuve le plus propre de France dans lequel il y a une vraie richesse, une vraie diversité biologique. And what are the specialties of the Garonne River? Alors, les spécialités sur la Garonne sont à la fois la civelle, donc le bébé anguille, l'anguille et la lamproie. La spécialité que je préfère, moi, c'est la crevette blanche. C'est un, une crevette endémique des fleuves que l'on trouve dans tous les fleuves du monde, mais il n'y a quasiment qu'à Bordeaux et qu'en Gironde qu'on a une tradition séculaire, donc depuis des siècles, pour la pêcher, pour la consommer, Et maintenant, on peut trouver ces crevettes-là dans les meilleurs restaurants de Bordeaux, aussi bien que sur les marchés. Et si les gens veulent la déguster, en général, ils viennent avec moi sur le bateau pour découvrir comment on la pêche. Et après, je leur fais griller les crevettes sur le bateau. C'est plutôt yeah. sympathique. So you actually bring tourists out uh, to discover the rich diversity of la Garonne. If you're interested, you can check out Le Pêcheur de Bordeaux. Thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. <laughs> If you've got a sweet tooth, you're going to love Bordeaux's signature pastry, the quenle. The treat says a lot about Bordeaux's history. You can find them literally on every street corner, and you can also make them at home. Ce sont des ingrédients relativement simples qu'on trouve chez soi dans ces placards. Donc c'est composé de sucre, de lait, de farine, d'œuf, et pour le parfum, de vanille et de rhum. Des ingrédients simples et faciles à réaliser. C'est juste qu'il faut le bon moule, donc des moules en cuivre, pour avoir cette caramélisation spécifique au cannelé, croustillante à l'extérieur, moelleuse à l'intérieur. And it's interesting that there's vanilla and rum in the cannelés because they don't come at all from France. Non, ouais, ça vient pas d'ici effectivement. C'est donc issu de, de l'historique du port de Bordeaux, euh, qui faisait euh, tout, bah, toute la richesse de Bordeaux venait du commerce triangulaire, donc euh, qui récupérait évidemment des esclaves pour les envoyer dans les dom-tom ou euh, aux États-Unis. Et ensuite, en échange, on récupérait donc du sucre et euh, du rhum, donc le sucre de canne. C'est comme ça que voilà, le cannelé est apparu à, à Bordeaux. Euh, uh, un peu uh, à cause du commerce triangulaire. On doit d'abord casser les, les œufs, uh, mettre le sucre dans les œufs, mélanger. Ensuite, on, on va rajouter le lait. On dilue uh, l'ensemble, on met notre gousse de vanille et on rajoute notre rhum et uh, notre beurre fondu dans la pâte, tout simplement. On va la laisser au moins 24 voire 48 heures au frigo et ensuite on pourra la mettre dans des moules en cuivre, graisser des moules en cuivre et on mettra en cuisson pendant presque une heure pour avoir vraiment cette couche caramélisée du cannelé. So the cannelés have come out of the oven. How do you know when you've got a good cannelé? Alors un cannelé ça doit être croustillant, donc on doit avoir une couche assez épaisse de croustillant et ensuite on doit avoir un intérieur très moelleux, presque fondant avec cet alvéolage, en, en fait, ça, ça correspond comme à du bon pain, en fait. On a cette couche caramélisée, croustillante à l'extérieur, et voilà, cet intérieur bien moelleuse. That looks delicious. Yes. <laughs> Merci beaucoup, uh, Lucas, and a big thank you to Maeva. Now you can make them at home.
Well, that's it for this special French Connections in Bordeaux. We'll leave you here at the Monument au Girondin, but before we go, a big thank you to our team, Georges Yazbek and Louise Morer. Is there another region of France that you'd love to discover? If so, why don't you reach out and we'll try and make it the next stop on our culinary Tour de France. And we'll see you soon for another episode of French Connections Plus. Versailles, Mont Saint-Michel, the Louvre are well-known stars of French heritage. But French genius and France harbors many other hidden treasures. The arts, gastronomy, architecture, as well as nature's wonders. Come along with France 24. Discover France's living heritage. From young apprentices to accomplished craftsmen and farmers, to Michelin star sporting chefs, meet these people whose passion for their professions preserve and drive French heritage. You are here on France 24 and France24.com.